all of you can uh, uh, whenever uh, you can switch on the video if you have data problem trouble trouble then you make a chart write to puja she will take care of it okay subhadeep you can start are you uh, do you have the permission to present uh yes sir uh, okay. is my screen visible yeah i am visible your screen okay <laughs> yeah okay so yes, today we will be so, uh, guys the subhadeep will be very slow maybe he is you know so be careful be attentive to this because he will not be able to repeat things by again and again because the time is short okay all the best puja you can take the attendance in the meantime yeah uh, today we will be seeing like how arduino is working as an embedded system okay so is arduino is you? first you let's say audible to all of you or if anybody has any problem in the this hearing this you can raise your hands through this chat box okay i think they are, they are, it is audible so go ahead yeah so arduino is a microcontroller based open source electronic prototyping board uh, which i have uh, in the earlier classes i have asked you to buy uh, this can be programmed with an easy to use arduino ide this is the software tool which i have given uh, today morning i asked you to download it so arduino consists of a physical programmable circuit board uh, in which i will be showing in the later parts of the video And a, uh, and, and a piece of software or, or an ID. ID is an uh, uh, development environment. So Arduino ID is uses a simplified version of C++, precisely which is an embedded C. So the Arduino Uno is one of the popular boards of the Arduino family. Uh, there can be many other boards like Arduino Nano, Arduino Mini, and so on. So these are the major components consisting. of an arduino no hardware architecture so first one is an usb connector a power port a microcontroller this is the brain of the arduino and analog input and digital input pins uh, and a reset switch crystal oscillator usb interfacing chip and tx rx leds so coming to the first one this usb connector uh, this is a printer usb port which can be used to load a program from the arduino id onto the arduino board so i'll be showing you how to uh, load any schematic any any code structure in, into your arduino board and how to run it and this board can also be powered through this port okay so next is this power port uh, you can like uh, the arduino remembers the code which we have already uploaded to it so later on you all you might not need to use an usb connector always so you can use and use a power port uh, like instead of that so this arduino board can also be powered through an ac dc adapter or a battery this ac ac dc adapters comes in a variety ranges like uh, 5 volt 1 ampere or 6 volt 1 ampere 12 volt 1 ampere or 2 ampere so you can use those you use this power adapters accordingly okay so this power source can be connected by plugging in a 0.1 mm center positive plug onto the power jack of the board so this one is recommended for using this arduino board this arduino board operates at a voltage of 5 volt but it can be stand the maximum voltage of 20 volts so this uh this board uh contains a voltage regulator and this voltage regulator is present between the power port and the usb connector that protects the port from burning out in case you uh, like uh, give it a supply of 12 volt or 15 volt like this so it drops it down to 5 volt and it 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 uses for the uh, it it uses this power for like running the peripherals which is this uh, arduino board so next one is this microcontroller this one is the most important one it is you you can like see it as the most prominent visible black rectangular chip with 28 pins so this 
particular microcontroller in, in Uno board is the Atmega 328P, which which is uh, which whose architecture is designed by Atmel. This one is a major microcontroller manufacturer company. So coming to this microcontroller, this Atmega 328P has this following components in it. Uh, it it has a flash memory of 32 KB. This this flash memory is used for storing the program loaded in the Arduino, which which you are loading it from the Arduino ID. So the microcontroller needs a certain memory to hold the code in, 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 in inside it. So this flash memory does this stuff. So and it it contains a 2 KB RAM. So this one is the runtime memory, and it also contains a CPU which controls everything that goes with that goes on within the device. It fetches the program instruction from flash memory and runs it with the help of RAM. Okay. So and lastly, it also contains uh, EEPROM. EEPROM is electrically irreversible programmable read-only memory of size 1 KB. This is a type of non-volatile memory and it keeps the data even after the device restart or reset. So this Atmega 328P is pre-programmed with bootloader. This allows you to directly upload a new Arduino program into the device without any use of external hardware programmer. We're making it this Arduino port user friendly. So next, come next. This are this. These are these analog pins which are present in the Uno board. The Uno board has six analog input pins. You can see them as labeled as analog zero to analog five. So these pins can read the signal from an analog signal, right? So this analog signal, you can think this analog signal as uh, like any kind of um, ambient temperature or humidity monitoring sensors, or it can be vibration sensor, or it can be higher sensor, sound sensor, anything. And this uh, sensor and uh, and it works this and log sensors value in, into a digital value for system understanding. So this analog pins measures voltage and not the current. Okay. So because they have very high internal resistance, hence only a small amount of current flows through this pin. Coming to the this digital pins, you can find these pins labeled as digital zero to digital 30, right? Uh, maybe right next to this uh, analog pins. And these pins can be used as either input or output. So when these pins are used as output pins, this can be this can act as a power supply for the components connected to it. Okay. And when it is used as an input pin, they they read the signal from the components connected to them. Okay, so just like this analog sensor, there are several digital sensors also. So maybe I will be showing you in the later classes like this what are these analog and what are these digital sensors. So when these digital pins are used as output pins, they supply 40 milliamps of current at five volts, which is more than enough to turn on LEDs and some digital sensors and LEDs. So uh, some of the digital pins are labeled with style symbol. Okay, so this, uh, you can find this symbol next to the pin numbers three, five, six, nine, ten, 10, and 11. These pins can act as normal digital pins, but side by side, they can use. They can also be used for pulse width modulation. So, which simulates the analog output, such as fading of an in, such as fading of an LED in and out. So, next one is a switch. Uh, basically, this one is used uh, for sending a logical pulse or to the reset pin of the microcontroller. Of this at mega 328p and uh, runs the program again from this tab. And uh, you can also use this uh, reset switch if your code doesn't repeat or if you want to test it for multiple times. Okay, so next is a crystal oscillator uh, which is present in this Arduino board. This is a quad quartz oscillator which takes 16 million times a second. Uh, you can think the operation like when it ticks at each point of time, the microcontroller performs 
one operation for example addition subtraction etc so next is an usb interfacing chip so this this one is a usb interfacing chip this uh, like uh, think this as a signal translator like whenever you are powering the arduino if it's in with, with, with the um, usb uh, uh, connector i have shown here like this one so whenever you are using this this yeah uh, this uses this act like a signal trans translator and it converts the signal in the usb level to a level that an arduino uno understands uno board understands and lastly this tx rx indicator so tx basically stands for transmit and rx for receive this indicators these indicators are basically leds which are present here on this uh, on this uno board and blinks whenever the uno board is transmitting or receiving this this in data okay so here it you can see like it is a basic uh, simple interfacing of a uh, vibration sensor so this vibration sensor is 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 known by the part name ADXL335 this sensor requires a uh, power of 5 volt for its operation and it can uh, show or it it can it it's it, it's working it, it its data limit is of plus 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 to minus 3g like its vibration index magnitude and it has three analog pins this analog pins can be interfaced to this analog channels of this Arduino board. Like it has for X axis, you can interface it with this A0 pin. With for the Y axis of this uh, ADXL sensor, you can interface this Y axis with A1 and correspondingly this Z axis with A2. This one is the 5 volt, and the other uh, last pin is for ground. So after interfacing this, uh, we'll be seeing how to write our first program in Arduino ID. Okay, so basically, like uh, we require the uh, like we require multiple libraries for according to our convenience, we write we we include the libraries. But for this case, I have only included this math dot uh, library. So math dot is the header file with in the standard library of C programming language designed for basic mathematic cooperation. So most of this function involved uh, you know, is, is most of this function involved the use of floating points number. So here I have defined this uh, x, y, and z pins of this this uh, ADXL sensor with a1, a2, and a3. Uh, and look and look pins of this uno board uh, next is the, the void set of function this this part of this function is it, it runs one okay so and inside this we will be defining this serial dot begin uh, under this 9600 is the board set this tells the arduino to get ready to exchange messages with the serial monitor okay so what this what it will do is like this uh, it will be transmitting the data at 9600 bits per second from the uh, from your laptop or computer serial to your arduino okay so basically this 9600 is known as the portrait the other portrait can can also be like 15200 this is these are the standard portraits used used for this uh, Used for this microcontroller data communication. So, next is this void loop. Inside this, you will be we will be writing all the uh, stuffs which are required to run again and again. Okay. So, basically, this uh, ADC value, this x-axis ADC value, this y-axis ADC value, and this z-axis ADC value are the analog to digital converted values okay so as the our uh, adc uh, these these analog pins of this arduino 
is a uh, has, has a 10 bit is a 10 bit uh, ADC. So for that the ADC conversion formula is this analog read into 5 5 is the system voltage divided by 1024 1024 is coming from 2 to the power 10 so uh, 10 is the like um the the um, the maximum bit this adc is supporting in the arduino so next is like we'll be defining this uh, adc values for x y and z this serial dot print will be printing this ADC values in a serial monitor. Okay, and these are the conversion values. This conversion values is is I have taken it from the data set of this ATXL three four five sensor three three five sensor just shown here. So this this converting formulas give me gives me the um, the acceleration values for x axis y axis and z axis respectively so i will be showing you let, uh, later on after this uh, presentation is over so uh, how i am getting this accelerometer data in a serial monitor okay. so and lastly this role which are the orientation angles which are uh, like uh, used for um, showing how much the rotation my vibration sensor is uh like getting when when i am uh, like uh, using it with with a with a motor or with any shaking stuff so this roll and pitch converting formulas i have taken it from the data sheet and lastly this i am printing this uh this values over the serial uh, on serial with the with, with the serial dot command line okay so these are some of the snapshot I have taken, but I will be showing you now, like how to actually get this board and how to select this board and how to write this code and finally upload it in my Arduino ID. Sorry, in my Arduino. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, our main motive for today's class is to design a digital filter uh, which we can use in Arduino and uh, uh, like this digital filter we will be using for we will be using for a first first order low pass filter and basically we will be filtering out the noises in the uh, vibration sensor which we are getting like the ADXL C4 35 sensor so what I did here is that I, I have written uh, in, uh, like this junk of codes in, in, in the command window in MATLAB. So I will be explaining like what I did here. Okay, so basically I have written here, what I did here is uh, taken here is a, a low pass first, first order filter. Uh, it passes signals with a frequency lower than the selected cutoff frequency right an attenuate signal when uh, with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency okay so the first the, the order of the filter determines the amount of additional attenuation for frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency a first order filter for example uh, reduces the signal amplitude by half uh, so the power reduces by a factor of four or six dB every time the frequency doubles. Right. So the response of filter can be expressed. Uh, the the it can be expressed by by an AS domain transfer function. Okay. So this uh, this part I have written for transforming it into an AS domain transfer function. The variable S comes from the Laplace transform and represents complex frequency. Right. So for example, uh, the transfer function in S domain can be written as uh, K by one plus S by omega naught. Okay, so the idea here is to implement the low pass filter with the formula of an infinite impulse response IAR so, so, that, it can, so that it is easy to implement on any processor or FPGS. Okay, 
So for from the corresponding first order continuous time transfer function, which I have uh, which I told you uh, just moments ago, that is this k by one k by one plus s mega naught. This model is transformed to a discrete time transfer function. Okay, so this one is the discrete time transfer function. Right. So hence we uh, here we have written the equation in time domain impulse response from the transfer function of a discrete time filter. Here uh, this u n uh, is the unit step function, and this y n and for this y n uh, is is, is non-zero for all n greater than or equals to zero. Excuse so me, sir. We'll be using, yeah. Sir, can you turn on full full screen? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it once? Sir, full screen. Sir, it's not visible clearly. Okay. Yeah, it's visible now. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so as I as I was telling, like hence we we will be writing this equation in time domain impulse response from the transfer function of a discrete time filter. Uh, here from the discrete time filter and next like uh, as as we heighten this and uh, in the next part as i've told like this un is the step uh, unit step function and yn is uh, non zero for all n greater than zero my screen is and so it's not coming to the next slide Give me a second. Guys, record it. Steps, Swadeep. Yes, sir. So you have told these steps, right? Uh, yes, sir. sir. I am. I will be showing now how to do it in in, in this okay, uh, okay. in this Please development environment. Please do that. Okay. So after you like get it, get get this stuff from uh, MATLAB. You need to re in, in, you just need to edit your sketch once again. Like I pretend it for the filtered ADC value for using this equation here. So and later on, I have again written this serial dot print statements to finally compare and show these ADC values 
versus this filtered ADC value. Okay. So, Okay, uh, getting just at start getting familiar with this Arduino ID. So basically, what you need to do is like first you need to write this sketch and D5 with this tick mark sign here. Like if any error is present in your code. Okay, so if you have selected any wrong board or there is any kind of error in your sketch your compilation of this code won't occur okay so when i do this very verify sign here my code will be compiled and it it it, it will be ready to be uploaded to my arduino id right so next here comes the upload upload point button so what i need to do is like before selecting this upload button I need to see whether I have selected the correct port and port here. So as my Arduino is connected to my USB receptor in my um, in my laptop, so here it is detected as COM port Arduino. Uno. Similarly, you will be also getting this this uh, this message here. Okay, and if your ID is not Coming with pre-built uh, board board managers, uh, board board files for this Arduino. What you need to do is go to this board manager here, click over here, and you need to select. Just a second. Sir, what is so, the use of that line serial dot? Excuse me, sir. Uh, which one? So serial dot begin and in the bracket 9600. What is the use of that line? Okay. So serial dot begin initializes your communication, uh, your uh, the communication of this Arduino Uno board with your laptop. Okay. So this junk of course need to be transformed or burnt in your arduino Uno, right so this yes. serial dot begin initializes this communication transfer so and in, in and, and on the bracket 9600 is the data transmission rate this data transmission rate is set to 9600 for 9600 bits per second means you are sending or you are communicating data over this over this cable over this USB cable at a rate of nine six zero zero bits per second. Okay, sir. So you, sir, but we want to increase the rate of data transfer, right? So why can't we yeah, increase that yeah. number? Yeah, we can increase this number to like uh, there are standard for uh, board rates. I'm showing you just a second. Yes. अबे मित्र कितना ठंडा लग रहा है तुमको ना तुम किसी को बिठा दिया सर सर अच्छा नहीं लगा यू आर नॉट यू आर बियोंड रिकॉग्निशन एक्चुअली ठीक है ची नो प्रॉब्लम यस सर दो जगह रहते हैं
तो बाय हाथ में व्हाट्सएप चलता है तुम्हारा ठीक है अबे भी तो तुम्हारा क्या हुआ तुम्हारा वीडियो वीडियो तो नहीं है है क्या अबे अभी जाए अभी जाए उधर है अभी जाए नहीं है चला गया छुट सर चल हम दे हेलो ठीक है ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम yeah so this 9600 this bordered for serial communication can be increased to uh, 14400 19200 28800 and like this you can increase it to up to 115200 okay so i can't show you here because my screen is hang but you can do this these are the standard uh, bordered for serial communication and instead of using 9600 you can use this term but you guys have to write in assembly he is demonstrating in c yeah and uh, next thing is uh, for uh, this if if, if after uh, down installing your arduino id and uh, you need to select the proper board for uploading the sketch uh, your your sketch won't compile if you aren't selecting a proper board for that so what you need to do is from in this board manager type arduino avia boards and you need to include all the packages for the arduino avia boards from here with with a just with with, with a click from here and uh, Just click on this install uh, button, and you put your uh, corresponding all the files for this Arduino Uno board, and you can see that for Arduino Nano, Arduino Mega, and all other this Arduino packages board will get installed, and you can select the proper board from here. So these are the things like you need to do uh, before uploading your sketch, and from here. just go to arduino avia board and select on arduino uno once you have selected this and you are uploading your sketch uh, you will you will be getting a compilation compiling sketch message over here that your sketch has been uploaded and uh, the memory has been consumed to this percent and that's all and after that you can you can see see your Uh, the data or the plots from a serial plotter over here. I will open it once again. Just uh, go here, click on tools, and click on serial plotter. Okay. So excuse me sir yes sir can you explain that reset switch i missed that part reset reset button can i explain it subhadeep yeah uh, can, I, can i answer two questions one question was what is the need of flash and what is this reset so there is a power and reset button when you reset the in the uh, you will understand in the following classes but let me just clarify here when you have a uh, controller 
so it starts executing the code from the uh, some definite location so once you reset it the program counter which keeps tracks of the code address of the code so it will be loaded with that 0000 or something like that so that it will start executing from that so this is called reset we'll talk about it in the class in detail yeah and yes, then yes, see yes. what is the need of flash memory so flash is non volatile ram you have to put your codes there when you put the code there and you reset it will start executing from that that means it is independent of you now you can keep it anywhere okay so, so this so, you can go ahead so, so why we are using uh, eprom like isn't the eprom and flash memory both work yeah, same eprom is uh, this flash memory is one type of eprom which can be erased and programmed by uh, voltages earlier eprom was uh, erased by ultra volt rays it is not required it is an eprom only uh, so it is called flash mm -hmm. memory but it is faster eprom uh -huh. ha please tell me on um, um, the nv ram that is the non volatile ram uh, must be slower than ram right no 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 it is not so so, so the, this question will arise when i teach you ram so the fast uh, uh, so ram read write bandwidth of a ram depends upon where it is placed if it is near to the cpu definitely it is faster that means registers are very fast but if it is away from cpu it depends upon what is the technology for example if you have this Uh, uh, the ram uh, depending upon the uh, nanometer you know technology the, the memory bandwidth is decided from the technology not from the uh, the nomenclature so uh, so only thing is in the flash you cannot normally write you have to write using little higher voltage but you can read for ram this uh, you can read and write both okay So, if, so 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 not necessarily that if flash is there it is slower and nv and flash there is a non volatile means when the power is gone the code or the data is still there that is the meaning of non volatile ram so eprom eprom flash they are all non volatile ram otp roms one time programmable roms so these are some of the non volatile rams also there are rams which are backed up by battery they are also called non volatile but when the power goes there is a capacitor which will discharge by the time it discharges it automatically switches to the backup so this is also nv ram so we'll talk about all the memory technology on class okay but the access is random any address you load it the read time will be same the write time will be same so this is random access memory that's why flash disk are very fast magnetic disk are not random access they are serial access so therefore it takes time but flash disks are much faster because you can just access it very fast uh, any questions hello sir yes uh, sir uh, we included math.h to use math functions so where are setup and loop defined which headers okay so what please respond to this question yeah uh Like you were asking, like why I have used setup and loop. Uh, yes, sir. Means where is the definition of setup and loop? There should be some headers, right? Ah, uh, no. Actually, like if you are using ah uh, any functions from your end, if you are defining any functions from your end, you need to like define it ex externally. But this loop and setup comes like this. The these are ah. Uh, present in built in this case so you need not define this like from your end it, it it should be present in all of these cases like this is the structure of of an arduino sketch okay okay sir and uh, like you said in the, we have 32 kb flash memory so we can't put th more than 32 kb of code right yeah So, sir, if we include many header files, so those headers would be also going with our code, right? Yeah. So it it, it, it might happen it. that we exceed that memory. Yeah, it can happen, but it generally it's it it's not happening because the these header files are written in an optimized way, so it won't go out of your. No, you have to be careful there. You should not write a code which is 30 more than this 32 kilobytes, and most of the code should not be so big. Also, if it is so big, then it yeah. is not the right code. You have to optimize the code. That is one of the reason. Otherwise, if you more 
suppose you have 128k we are at mega 128 that is where actually you have got 128 kilobytes of flash but it will consume more power so you have to be uh, this is this particular controller 328 is meant for automotive applications so this has been optimally placed so that you don't have to write a code which is more than that if it is then you have to go for another controller or you have to go for external memory interface yes, okay So, Adib, are you showing some demo or what? Uh, sir, actually, I am I have almost finished this uploading of this case. And I will be showing how I am getting this data in a serial plotter. Okay. And thank how you, thank this you. So, it's so it is. Yes. With this, actually, your lab, there will be no more demos on the hardware. You have to learn, pick up from here. This recording is there. You can see the recording and do the lab stuff. Okay. The lab will be taken by the professors individually. They will uh, scrutinize what we are doing. So, in the theory, we have uh, already told about Proteus and this. So, next week, your hardware implementation would start. Okay. So similarly, it will happen for IoT and all these uh, things. So you subsequently, once you are done with this, and you guys are supposed to come up with some innovative projects. I have not yet got only except one per person, one student. I have not received any groups. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Uh, yes, Hello. please. Sir, uh, uh, here uh, you have written the code on uh, Arduino ID. So can't we use that uh, admin studio you have installed before for the same purpose, writing code? Uh, I think you should in. be able to do that. You should be able to that, uh, do that. But the header file, the programmer, the, that is that is the, the, for the for that you need a different programmer here the programmer and it is called in circuit emulator the programmer and the software they are actually very close closely related so you have to generate the uh, corresponding file so that this programmer is able to understand it otherwise uh, i think it will be difficult so you have to use arduino id uh, to generate that Okay. I'm not sure. Shubhadi, what is your opinion? This guy is saying, I think he has a point that if you use Atmel Studio to build the code and you want to use Arduino to dump, I think it should be possible. Hex file you have to dump, that's all. I think it should be possible. You try it. Abar. Abar, na? Abar, okay, na? So you yes, try sir. it, I think it should be. First you do with the Arduino, then if you do, I think you can just hex file the dump must be there. You check it out. Yes, sir. X file is generated there. Yeah, you generate the X file there and drop a dump it to Arduino. It is possible. Okay, sir. Yes, with Arduino, you can do assembly. You can check. Know whether you can put it there. It's a baud rate. On what basis you are selecting the baud rate? Baud rate. Uh, this is a, there is an USA, USART which I will teach you in the class. So it has got a serial baud rate up to 192 kilobits per second. So for the serial monitor, you are only sending the ASCII or you are sending some uh, characters for uh, plotting. So 9600 baud rate is sufficient for that. If you increase it beyond that, it's possible, but it will consume lots of power. 
So that is the basis you can say. But suppose you are not okay with this bond rate, you want to increase it, then you have to change your serial uh, port. Like USB can go up to one gigabits per second. So the bond rate is the rate of data transmission in a digital channel is based on the signal bandwidth. What the data bandwidth you want, data rate. So this data rate and bond rate they are related. So this is uh, requirement is coming from the what the use. The use is here the serial plotter. So that is the basis of selecting the bond. It is similar to CC plus, I think. CC plus plus. Arduino codes are not very different, right, Zubadip? Yes, sir. Hmm. please do it fast because it is take it will take another five minutes in there for the class so i am going to wow. tell all the professors who are connected to the lab that the demo for the hardware is over so you guys can next week uh, should be able to demonstrate hardware so in the class i'll tell you the filter design little bit basics and the architecture So, uh, as you can see, these are the vibration data I'm getting. So, this gray one is the filtered output, and this green one is the uh, like the sensor raw data which I'm getting.
I am uh, giving it a jerk after a certain uh, two or three second interval. And these are the data I am receiving in my serial plot. Are you done? Uh, yes, sir. I'm done. Sir. Okay, you guys, if you have any questions, you post it. So, what you will answer that question? Okay, you post it here because this is the most important class for your labs. Actually, lab and theory all are together. We will grade them together. Okay, so it is likely that whatever grade you will get in theory, the same grade in the lab, most likely because you will take some parts of the mark from the lab as well. Okay. So most of them will be demonstrable things. So digital filter is for the lab, but we'll give you something else for the theory. Okay. So we'll meet again on Monday. So uh, uh, we please upload your assignment homework, which you have given to you and pick up assembly language coding as much as possible. Okay. All the best. Bye.